Mm -hmm. Or I have to tap into the love of God. Mm, that's probably. Because I'm drained. Mm. Okay? But I'm supposed to tap into the love of God and then give that to my father, my mother, my wife, my children, all of us. Mm. Are you with me? Amen. Courtney. So is it possible then to say I'm giving all my love to God and then have hate them and really hate them? No, that means you. If, if I end up hating truly, all right, but the hate here is in respect to loving Him. So this doesn't really mean hate as in the as in the emotion hate. It means if you have feelings for them, right, that means you're not fully loving God. Right. You have to forsake them mm -hmm. for God mm -hmm. fully. Then he gives you his love mm -hmm. to give to them. To give them. Because with his love, his love is never looking for anything in return. And if, if I'm giving love and never looking, he's not even thinking about it, anything in return, well, then I can't be hurt. Mm. We get hurt when we're looking for something from other people mm -hmm. and they don't deliver it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, now if I'm giving God's love, which is one way, then I reduce an opportunity to be hurt. I reduce an opportunity to be wounded. I, I close a door to Satan. Mm -hmm. But notice it requires... I give all my love to the Lord. And many people play with this and they say it, but in truth, they still love their father, their mother, their wife, their children, and so forth. And, and God has to compete with those family members. Mm. Mm. We see a stark example at several places through the gospel. Uh, people come and say, oh Lord, I'll follow you but let me go right. do this first. Let me go bury, he said, uh, let the dead bury the dead. But you follow me for life. It's a, it's a hard, stark contrast, but it's from a God who understands any time I leave just a slight millimeter door open, I'm opening myself to Satan at some point. Right. Courtney. I just have one more question about mm -hmm. this hate thing, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking also about what Jesus said about who are my mother and my brothers, but those who do the will of God. And I'm also thinking about how we have to hate the devil. And I know we don't hate people, we hate the spirits in them. But right. what does hate, I mean, how do, you, how do you look at your family if you know that your family is not your family? You know what I mean? Well, it, it, they're still family to a degree. As a matter of fact, it's interesting, David, you started us on this, this concept from James that we're only here for a short time. Right? And... It's like um, in high school we talk about senioritis, right? right? The, I'm about to graduate and all of a sudden I get so, I get so caught up with graduating I kind of <laughs> take my eye off the ball, yeah. right? So we're here now, but God says, but this isn't, isn't really your home, nor is this really your family. Mm -hmm. These are simply the people I've used to bring you here, mm -hmm. right? So when you get that perspective, you can put family where they should be. These are people God used to get me here, mm -hmm. parents uh, specifically. But we know in the resurrection that we, it won't be family. Mm -hmm. So do I, you know, give them all my love now, knowing, well, they're not going to be family in eternity. Mm -hmm. It gets the right perspective. So the focus is, why don't you focus on your eternal family, mm -hmm. not on your temporal family. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's not a matter of hating. It's a matter of putting them in the right place. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, love is love is uneducated for the most part until you educate. Hmm. Hmm. I mean that's on, on probably what I can say. I remember as a teenager I, I described love as a feeling you feel when feeling a feeling you've never felt before. <laughs> it didn't mean anything. Just just I just say it all the time. It's a feeling wow. you feel. But it's not a feeling. It's really first a decision. Mm -hmm. It's first a decision. Amen. That God is true. And I can trust his word. Mm -hmm. And if his word is true, and I'm going to put my trust in it, then I'm going to put all my love there. Because he can give me what nobody else can. Amen. He'll never fail me. Mm -hmm. But a human always can. And always will. Mm -hmm. So it's making a decision. Okay? Does it lessen? So it's a matter of um, of, of, of priorities. We understand priorities. 
Here you are uh, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, any given day in a week, and the phone rings. Okay, um, your son has been hurt. Well, you're probably going to drop everything and go run mm -hmm. and take care of your son. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you're, you're, you're at work and the phone rings. Your wife just went into labor. You're probably going to drop everything and, mm -hmm. and run. It has priority. Mm -hmm. You're hearing about another person being in labor. Okay, that's nice. See, it doesn't have the same priority for you. Mm -hmm. It's an event, but it, it, it's not a priority in, on your ski. Amen. Mm -hmm. God now has to be priority number one. That's right. Are you dropping everything mm -hmm. to do what he said to do? Or is he competing? And, and, and for the most part, when, if he competes, he competes last. Because <laughs> we, we do things for family. And we, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, God. I mean, I, mean, I guess I'm the God. And for most Christians, it's going to church or something. It's, going, it's serving on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a committee, on an auxiliary. And, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, re I'm really worshiping God. <laughs> He's like, no. Because I'm a jealous God, he says. Mm. You can't give me four hours out of a week and think you're serving me, think you're loving me, you wouldn't accept that from another person. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Someone who just professes great love for you, but spends about four hours a week with you? Mm. You could be hard-pressed. 